generally speaking, I mostly stay away from home games because, well, I guess a few different reasons, but mostly it's just not really my speed. However, once in a blue moon, I do make an exception to that rule. And it's only when certain requirements are met. This home game that I'm gonna feature today does meet all those requirements. Uh, it's a bunch of guys that I trust. It's a fun bunch. It's a safe neighborhood, etc., etc. And most importantly, it is a very action game. It's a 5, 10, 20, sometimes 10, 20, 40. A lot of action, uh, a lot of chips being passed around. And hopefully today we can end up on the right side of that. Now, before we jump into cards, I wanted to remind you all that this Thursday, we're having the $10,000 free roll on Club GG. In case you guys missed my last video, it's a free tournament, $0 to enter, but $10,000 up for grabs. And if tournaments aren't really your thing, like me, there's also plenty of cash games available ranging from small stakes like 25 cent, 50 cent, all the way up to 5, 10, no limit. Something for everyone on there. And uh, if any of that sounds good, feel free to hit the link in the description and sign up. But anyway, that's enough for now. Let's get inside and play some cards. Alright everyone, here we are playing some 5, 10, 20, no limit. There's no max buy-in for this game, so I decided to sit with $10,000. In the first interesting hand, there's a straddle to 40, and two limpers before I look down at ace-9 suited. Seems like a good hand to raise in position, so I make it 200, and only the small blind calls. The flop comes king high with a diamond. Looks good enough to me, so when he checks, I continue with a bet of $175. The small blind makes the call, so we're off to a turn, which is the queen of diamonds. He checks again, and this time I bet 500. Obviously hoping for a fold, but even if he calls, we can improve to a flush or try to bluff the river. The small blind does make the call, so looking for some help now, but it doesn't come. He's got around 1300 left, and before I can even consider whether or not he'll fold for that amount, the small blind decides to move all in himself. Not much of a decision here, of course, time to let it go. In the next one, middle position opens to 110. I call on the button with sixes, and then the big blind raises to 500. Now the player who raised initially moves all in for less, I think it was around 250. I call the 500, and so we go three ways to a flop with one player already all in. The board comes pretty good for pocket sixes, it's 553. Big blind checks, indicating that he's probably got something like ace high, so I bet 300, but he makes the call. The turn is a king, which is terrible for me, so this time when he checks, I just check it back. The river comes a queen, and once again he checks. At this point, I'm not expecting to have the best hand, but it's also a ridiculous spot to attempt a bluff, I think. So I just check it back and get shown king queen from the all-in player and queen jack from the big blind. So yeah, sixes end up in third place. In the next fun hand of poker, early position opens to 50, the button calls and I look down at pocket eights in the small blind. I decide to raise this one to 300, and then action folds to the straddler who makes the call. The initial raiser calls as well, so we go three ways to an amazing flop. 10, 8, 4, giving me a fairly disguised set. I continue with a $500 bet, before the straddler raises to 1,000, leaving himself around 600 behind. Player behind him folds and now it's back on me. I'm not sure what to make of this minimum raise. All I know is I've got three of a kind, so I announce all in and he quickly makes the call. We're off to a run out with around $4,000 in the middle and it comes 9-3. My opponent mucks his cards and just like that we take down the first part of the night. Unfortunately, I didn't start recording this next hand until the river, but basically there was a limp from middle position, I raised to 100 with ace-9 from the small blind, and the limper calls. Flop is ace-high with some draws, I chose to check it, he bet 125 and I called. Turn was another 10, I check, he bets 375, I call again, and we see the jack of spades on the river. I check it a third time, and he follows up with one last bet of $1,000. Not exactly a fun situation for me here. 
On one hand, I be a bunch of missed draws or random hands that start bluffing after I check on the flop. But on the other, I also lose to any 10, king queen, and some other stuff. So I don't know, for whatever reason this time, I chose to play it safe and let it go. Not something you hear me say very often. At this point in the night, we decided to play a round of stand-up. If you don't know how that game works, essentially it begins with everyone standing up. Once you win a hand, you can sit back down. But the last person standing owes everyone else a bounty. In this case, $50 per person. It's kind of silly, but I'm definitely a fan. Anyway, things usually get a bit crazier during stand-up. And you're about to see a clear example of that. There's a $50 straddle, and I look down at ace-3 offsuit in late position. Not a hand I'd typically play, but hey, my legs are feeling kind of tired already, so I make it 150 and get no less than three callers. Flop comes 10-8 deuce, no help to me, but probably not a ton of help to these guys either, so I continue telling the story with a bet of 175. Only the player on my direct left calls, and we see a four on the turn. I guess I'll just keep betting, this time 425. My thinking is he's probably not super strong on a board like this, but perhaps I'm wrong because he once again makes the call. The river brings me no improvement, and now we're in a tough spot. I could just damage control and give up, or fire one last attempt. Well, this is a group of guys I'm happy to give action to, so I choose the second option. I throw out one yellow chip, indicating a bet of $1,000, and now my opponent goes in the tank. After a few moments, he decides on a fold. Whew, luckily, this one works out, but it could have easily been a disaster. Anyway, nice to sit down and avoid that dreaded stand-up bounty. After about an hour of not picking up any hands, I finally open ace-9 in late position and get called by just the button. The flop misses me completely, so I check it this time, but the button disagrees and bets 65. Plenty of draws available, and against a lot of those, ace-9 is still ahead, so I make an optimistic call. Turn card is a blank, this time my opponent checks it back, and the river is a deuce. I check a third time, and now he bets $175. Well, I could easily have the losing hand, so folding seems rational, but all those draws that I mentioned on the flop still exist, and they all missed. I don't know, something felt a little suspicious here, so I toss in the call, and he says, you're good. In the next one, middle position opens to 50. The button calls and I defend the big blind with queen jack. The flop comes king queen four and it checks around. Turn is a six, bringing in some straight and flush draws. I feel like a queen is likely the best hand after the flop checks through, so I place a small bet of $50 and only the button comes along. Heads up to a river which improves us to two pair. I elect to bet $250, but looking back, I think a check makes more sense. Anyway, now the button raises to 625, and it's a strange situation. I would imagine all his strong hands would have raised on the turn. So does this mean he improved on the river? Maybe he was trapping the whole time? Honestly, I'm not too sure, but maybe he's bluffing or has a worse two pair. So I make the call, but we lose against ace-10. Good hand, you got me. Moving right along, I look down at ace-jack on the button, there's a limp from early position, so I make it 75 and get called by the small blind and limper. Flop comes ace high and it checks to me. I bet 100 bucks, the small blind calls, but the limper folds. Turn is an eight, usually a card that would help him more often than me, so this time when he checks, I just check it back, and we see another seven on the river. Now the small blind bets $300. Not much of a decision here. I quickly make the call, and we win against eight five of hearts. In the next hand, middle position limps in, and I decide to raise from the small blind with queen-10 offsuit. Not exactly recommended, I know, but like I said earlier, I'm happy to splash around more in a home game with some buddies. Anyway, I make it 100 and get called by the big blind and limper. Flop comes queen-4-3 with a flush draw. I bet 100 again, but both players make the call. So when the turn is a 5, I decide to slow down and check it. Big blind bets 400 now. Player behind him folds. And of course, I can't go anywhere just yet, so I make the call, and we see a three on the river. This time he fires $700 into the middle after I check it to him. There's a bunch of missed draws available, and my hand strength is somewhat disguised, so I make the call, 
but sadly we lose against Queen Jack. So some back and forth going on here tonight. A few minutes later, I open sixes to $50, the button makes the call, and then the small blind re-raises to 185. Deep stacked and in position, I'm not going anywhere, and apparently neither is the button. Three of us going to a flop which comes pretty damn good, 875. Not only is this good because I've got a pair in a straight draw, but this is also the kind of board where we can apply a lot of pressure against over pairs. And that's exactly what I plan on doing. Small blind continues with a bet of 110, and I raise right away to 400. The button gets out of the way, but the small blind is not giving up yet and makes the call. Turn isn't great, it's another 5, and on top of that, the small blind decides to lead out on this card for 375. He's got around 3,000 behind after this bet, so I think calling here still leaves our options open to bluff the river, potentially. But it turns out, it won't come to that because we make a straight with the 9 of diamonds. Interestingly enough, the small blind continues betting, this time $1,100. He's got about 2,000 remaining after this bet, and I'm going for it. If he somehow has a full house or a better straight, take my chips, I'm all in. However, he snap folds, so it looks like he didn't actually have anything. I gotta admit, that's a brave spot to be bluffing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the last hand of the night, and it's a wild one. I open King Jack to 50, someone calls in late position, and then the button min raises to 100. The small blind calls the 100, and it's back on me. I toss in the extra 50, because why not? And so does the player behind me, so four of us going to a miraculous flop, guys. Queen 10, 9, two diamonds. Literally could not pick a better flop. Action checks to the razor, fingers crossed that he keeps betting, and he does, $250. The small blind calls the 250, and of course I'm gonna raise, super advanced play on my part. I make it 750, player behind me folds, and it's back to the button. As if this situation wasn't sweet enough already, he announces another raise, this time $2,000. Small blind folds, and it's my turn again. Well, it seems like we probably have the same hand at this point, but in case we don't, I just move all in for his remaining 3,000, and as expected, he makes the call. I immediately announce my hand, but my opponent doesn't seem happy about it. I have King Jack. With over $10,000 on the line, we're off to see a turn in River. So yeah, pretty much the worst possible cards we could see, but somehow, some way, the button mucks his cards. No idea what he had, but of course, I'll take it, no questions asked. A few rounds later, we decided to call it a night, so it was time to rack up and head out. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Let's be honest, with the way I was playing tonight, Breaking even would have been fine. It's pretty obvious that I was gambling it up a little bit, just trying to have a good time. But I ended up somehow winning a really good amount. I was in for 10,000 and out for $20,900. So just shy of an $11,000 win. Needless to say how happy I am with that. It's not every day you get to win that much money playing cards. And especially doing it in a fun environment like this one, I'm really appreciative to have this home game in particular since I don't trust like 99% of them. But anyway, yeah, another very good night. Somehow this heater refuses to die. I also flopped a set right before leaving. Didn't capture it on camera, but won another decent sized pot in that hand. And yeah, it's been a really good start to the year. I'll just say that. In other news, tomorrow is the Super Bowl. I'll be at home all day editing this video. Maybe I'll watch it if I have time. I feel like LA is gonna win it. It seems like the Rams are the stronger team, but hopefully it's at least a close game, right? But anyway, that's it for tonight, guys. As always, thank you guys so much for the support. 
Don't forget about that $10,000 free roll coming up on Club GG. Link is in the description. As for myself, I actually have a vacation coming up Monday morning. I'm going on a cruise ship with Megan from LA down to, I think, some part of Mexico. It's just a few nights to get away. But once I get back, it's back to the regular scheduled programming. And I have a few fun announcements coming up in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Until then, guys, good luck at the tables. Peace.